One of Facebook's early investors, and famously a defector, author of the book, Zucked, Waking Up to the Facebook Catastrophe. Roger, Mark Zuckerberg owns Facebook. In every way, he's chairman, he controls the voting shares. Does he not know about these issues, or does he not care? I think the real problem we have here, Chance, is that in America, CEOs are taught that they have a duty to maximize shareholder value and nothing else. So it's a little bit like the excuse, I was just following orders. It forgives all manner of sins. And so I think what's going on here is that Facebook adopted a business model based on user attention. The way they get paid, the way they make money is to keep you focused. And they discovered very early on that because of the way social networks work, they had an advantage over traditional media. Not only could they narrow cast and target each person individually, but that in the context of social things, people would reveal their inner self. The stuff that ordinarily no media company has access to. And it transformed advertising and marketing. And the problem is, while it's valuable to everybody, it was most valuable to scammers, people like anti-vaxxers and, you know, QAnon. Facebook had a choice. They could have stomped down on it the way they did on pornography, but they did just the opposite. They, in a sense, enabled it to flourish. And they did so because that was the thing that was in the shareholders' best interest. And the, the battle we're faced with right now is what do we do about it? You talk about self-disclosure. But that's also kids. Kids are on there talking. And Mark Zuckerberg, he's a dad. Kids, their self-esteem is faltering because of some of these systems. Information is being collected about them formally and informally. It's going to be permanent. This is a publicly traded company, obviously. Profits matter. Where do kids fit in? So, Chance, there's a law on the books called the... Uh the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act that in theory protects kids. The problem is the bill essentially says that kids that are 13 years old and above are treated as adults, which on the surface is insane. And it's not enforced well enough to protect children under 13. Let me give you some examples. Microsoft has Minecraft, which kids beginning around age 10 start playing with. Then you have Fortnite and all the other video games. All of these things are relentless gatherers of data. What we have to recognize is that this business model of relentless surveillance and then the use of data to both limit people's choices and to manipulate their behavior, that is not just confined to Facebook. This exists not only in the technology industry, but throughout the economy now. The profitability of Google and Facebook has brought this thing to the attention of car companies, and banks, and healthcare companies, all of whom are using surveillance and using data to try to improve their profitability. And the problem with that is that we as individuals have no protection. There is no national privacy law here. And so what I'm urging Congress to do is to use this moment, the extraordinary courage, authoritative testimony, and really the utterly convincing testimony of Francis Haugen, and use that moment to go and fix the entire problem, to recognize the tech industry needs three kinds of regulation. It needs safety regulation, it needs privacy regulation, and it needs new antitrust laws. You've been out there ringing the alarm bell loudly for years, warning of what you call brain hacking. I remember I saw you on Bill Maher talking about it years ago. You said the first 10, 15 minutes on these apps, people enjoy them. Then it's fear, it's anger, it's envy. It's, you know, this paranoia that can kind of creep in and people say, what are people doing without me? How do people think about me? What did we learn today that we didn't already know because we knew it was bad? So previously, Facebook has relied on a combination of denial, deflection and dissembling to basically take advantage of the fact that the attention span of journalists and policymakers is pretty short. And if they could stretch something out, they could get by it. The thing that Francis Haugen did by being so courageous, so authoritative and so convincing and having documents that were created by the experts within Facebook for the top management is she proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the harms are the result of conscious business decisions made in the pursuit of profit. And the challenge here is that, in a sense, Mark Zuckerberg and that team were doing their job of maximizing profit. The problem is that 
in order to do that, they amplified disinformation related to a COVID pandemic, right? Extending the pandemic and killing hundreds of thousands of people. Now, they didn't kill those people, but the disinformation did. And they facilitated it. Same thing with the insurrection. The scope of harms is huge. And what Francis Haugen did was take away the last excuse Congress had for inaction. You're calling on an agency, kind of like the FDA, for food and medicine, like you said, to ensure the safety of tech products. But you already know the critiques out there, big government. People are going to say, well, do I want a billionaire making this decision for me? Do I want a government bureaucrat making that decision for me? And that's why some people are saying, no, just modify Section 230, which lets the tech companies off the hook for modifying content. What tweaks would be necessary in your view? So the... Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act is the thing that has, because of the court decisions, it has provided a safe harbor for essentially everything happening on internet platforms. It essentially relieves them of any responsibility for what happens. That is clearly not the intended purpose of the original act, and it's obviously harmful. The problem we face today, Chance, is that this has moved beyond internet platforms. So addressing Section 230 is not enough. And then you have you know, things like smart devices. You know, Amazon has announced a robot that follows you around your house recording literally everything that happens. I mean, these products are incredibly unsafe. I will make the following offer to your uh, to the viewers of this show, which is I want you to do a thought experiment and imagine a world of an unaccountable corporate government versus a government that is elected where you have a vote and you have the ability to influence it. Which do you like better? I think we forgot the government is us. And by forgetting that government is us, we've allowed corporations to buy their way into control of government. And it does not have to be that way. And it really is up to us to take that back, to get the money out of government. And, you know, it's going to be a long haul. But if we care about having a democracy, if we care about being able to make our own choices, it's essential that we begin now. So many of these conversations have been looking through a, a pinhole. I know you're looking big picture. Roger McNamee, thank you. Tyler, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here today.